Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and today's tutorial is all about how you can set your thesis up into a template to make sure that it looks it looks right, it looks good and it conforms to some style guidelines. So what do I mean by, by this and by the template? Well, when you're completing your, your thesis, there's certain ways that you have to set it out. So in a previous tutorial, I've talked about how to set it out in terms of um, your title page, following your acknowledgements and your abstract and that kind of stuff. Today is all about focusing on how to get your content page correct, but how you set that up as a Word document beforehand. So I've learned this through blood, sweat and tears really. So from my undergrad and my masters, I didn't know that this existed. So I did all this by hand. And as you can imagine, if you have 100 pages or so, it's very really time consuming to go through every single page, find out what your headings are and what page number there is. The same is also true for your figures and your tables. Very, very time consuming in your editing uh, part to go through, find each figure, and then add that into your contents page by hand. So it's really important then to save that time. So you've worked really hard, you've completed your thesis and your dissertation, be that undergraduate, master's, or PhD level. And obviously, it's going to take a lot of time to edit. So you should be editing anyway, but it's going to save you a hell of a lot of time going through doing these edits yourself when the computer can do it for you. So don't work harder, work smarter has always been one of my mottos. So how do we do that then? How do we set this up? Well, the first thing you should do is each one of your works, so be that um, your introduction or your chapter one, your chapter two, should be in a separate Word document. However, you need to make sure all those Word documents are in the same style and the same format. So we need to show Word how we want that to do. And we also want to show Word that, hey, look, I've got some subheadings here. I want them to be numbered. I also want them to be logical. And if I add a new section in, I want you to make sure that that number is going to follow through each time. So how do you go about doing that then? So first and foremost, you want to open up a blank Word document. And you want to go ahead and save it as, be that as a template or... You might call that chapter one, whatever you want to work on first and to set this up, feel free to go about doing that. So save it wherever you want to. Then what you want to do, you want to make sure that you're on the home button. And then you want to scroll along the top here to where it says paragraph. And can you see here, there's like these three lines which are slanted. If you highlight over that, it says a multi-level list. You want to go ahead and click on that. And then you want to scroll down here to... This one here that has loads of numbers, 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, 1.1, all the way through, heading 1, heading 2, etc. You want to go ahead and click on that. That's going to throw a number 1 in here. As you can see, it's highlighted up here. Go back into that one, but click the, the small down arrow to the right of that box. And then scroll down to define new multi-level list. You also want to click more at the bottom here. Okay, now we're ready to go. So, as you can see here in the top left, the top right even, our heading one here, well our heading one is going to be our chapter titles. Now, for proper academic work, each chapter obviously should be numbered in chronological order. But more than that, every heading within a chapter should also conform to the number that the chapter is. So for example, if this was chapter 2, then our heading should be 2.1. Then below that, 2.2, 2.3, etc. If it was chapter 4, it should start with number 4. So how do we go about doing that then? Well, first of all, we need to tell Word that our heading 1 button, which is up here, is going to be our chapter title. So go ahead and click just before the 1 and type in chapter and then it's up to you what you prefer if you prefer a colon or be that nothing at all um, or you might prefer uh, a hyphen I tend to prefer um, a colon for this section for my my chapter title 
You want to go down here to the bottom right which says follow number with. Very important that you put space here, otherwise the other stuff won't work. And finally is this one here where you can align your text. So this is where every single person will differ and it's not down to preference per se, but more what your university will dictate what you can and can't have. So if this is solely online, you can probably just get away with what Word suggests, which is an indentation of 0.76 centimeters. However, for most dissertations, be that undergrad um, or PhD, you're going to have to print them off and bind them. So your university will have regulations, which I'm sure you can find um, through your own uh, web pages, of what the requirement is. Typically, it's around about two centimeters or so from the left. And because of that, the reason for that is when you're binding a document of this size, obviously you need some space for that binding to go. And you don't want it all pushed up onto the left-hand side margin because obviously um, with that binding is you won't be able to read those words. So, so if you do find out whatever number that is, pop it into this text box here, this text indent, and then click set for all levels. And that will make sure that all of your headings are conforming to that. So we're happy for this one, we're just going to leave as that, we're going to click set for all levels at 0.76, whatever yours is you can change that. Here for this one because this is our main body of text, we're going to keep our number style as 123. As I mentioned in my previous tutorial, if you're setting this up for anything before your main chapter, so your title page, your content pages, your acknowledgements etc. They should all be in Roman numerals. But we're leaving it for 1, 2, 3 for now. Leave everything like that. We're going to click number 2. Now we see it's popped up here as 1.1. So that's the way we go in academic work. Our heading 2 is technically our first heading. And as I show you an example for that, as I scroll down, so as you can see here, my chapter 1, my first heading is 1.1, my background context to the study. And obviously then moving on to something uh, different, but still within that one, gets 1.1. And then obviously now I'm moving on to something separate, something different in the thesis. So chapter 1, section 2, and then obviously the research questions are within that. So it's 1.2.1 and then 1.2.2. So if you're ever struggling to figure out, well, how do I set this out? How, what numbers do I use? Your first heading is the broad overarching uh, discussion or aim of that particular section. And then obviously every subsection from there on in has to link back to that particular uh, heading. So, for example, here I'm talking about this whole section is about the thesis and its overview. And if you look here, section 1.4.1, well, that's all about uh, the methodology and then moving on to fieldwork, etc. as you go through. Similar here, I'm in my method section, I've got 2.2, which is all about the pragmatist approach taken. And then within that, I have to discuss Mitch's method, so it gets its 2.2.1. And then within that, is case-based approach 2.2.2 but that's all linking in to the pragmatist approach so that's how you go about setting that out so back to here then so you click number two 1.1 is popped up there you want to go click here make sure that you have space number three same again go down and click space and then you've got number four go down click space so you won't need any more than four. If you do have more than four, you've probably done something something wrong or you've not numbered them correctly. It's kind of poor form to have really any more than four subheadings really uh, as you go through in that level. Um, you're going to have to collapse them somewhere or rearrange them. Um, typically, you'll only really have three, but at a push, you can do four. So that's all fine. Click OK. Now, as we see here, we now have our chapter one, our title. So we've clicked heading one and we've got our title. So you would type your title in there. Then if you click heading number two, for example, yeah, it's going to get you 1.2. So you've got your first heading. 
then underneath you would just you know type away as you would I just do those of little stuff here then underneath if you wanted to do another one so if you want to have a new section as you see here as I'm hovering over it it's now numbered that for me 1.1.2 if you want to do another subsection number three so second heading and then finally we're on our third heading So obviously the really good thing about this now is every time I then add in another section, so 1.2, that's going to change to there. Next one, 1.2.1. If I add a new chapter in, chapter 2, and then I do heading 2, as you can see now, chapter 2, heading 2, etc. That's all sorted. Now we're not quite done yet though, because if you look here, we'll... I don't personally like Libri. I certainly don't want my titles to be blue. It's not very professional. So, how do we go about changing this then? So, if you look here where you have your styles box, if you click the little arrow uh, here, at the bottom right, our heading 1 is selected, so that's highlighted. Go down to the bottom and click Manage Styles. Once this is up, click Modify. And here, this is where we can change everything. So, first thing we want to change is our colour. Well, I want black. I want it to be bold, because it is our uh, chapter title. I want it to stand out. I want to leave it as 16, but I have a real preference for Garamond. So, Garamond font is what I used in my PhD. Garamond is typically what novels are written in. I think it is an excellent font for viewing stuff on PDFs online. It's very clear, it's very crisp. However, in text and printed out, it also looks absolutely fantastic. Um, now, I was very lucky. We didn't have, in my particular university, uh, any set style guidelines for what font. If you don't have a recommendation for font, I highly recommend that you use Garamond. I think it's a fantastic font to use. However, some people like Calibri. You know, there's nothing particularly wrong with that, I just don't really, really like the look of it. And Times New Roman, I find, can be very blocky, um, but it is the traditional academic font. Um, and Arial, again, when you've got up against uh, Calibri, sorry, up against uh, Garamond, there's no real comparison. But of course, whatever your university, if they do dictate to be Arial, for example, then do make sure that you set it to that and you can set that there. Now, if you want to be a little bit more jazzy, you can, first and foremost, what you need to do is click, uh, before we do make anything jazzy, click this new document based on this template. So, that's really important because that's going to change your entire system to be in this. Every time you write or you make your new chapters, it's going to conform to this. So that's really important that, that happens. So, if you do want to make it a bit jazzy, if you click Format and then Fonts, so for me, for my uh, my headings of my chapter titles, I always like them to be in small caps. So you don't want all caps because that's huge. You want small caps. It just looks a lot better. Um, and if you really want to, you can play around with that. What works for you? Do you want a strike through? Do you want a subscript, etc.? And you do some spacing as well. So you can expand the words or you can contract them. So do you want them closer together? Do you want them to be expanded, do you want them to be normal, play around, see what you work, what you think works best. So we do that, we click OK, that's that one all set up, if we click OK now, and then OK again, as you can see, that's now changed uh, to our title, our chapter 1 title, right the way through, that looks good, that looks fine, if we click on our second heading, so then again, make sure it's highlighted, Scroll down to the bottom to our Manage Styles. Modify. Let's change the colour. We want to go black. We want to go Garamond. We're happy with the, the font there being at 13. Click OK. Click OK again. Then our second heading, which is technically our third one. Manage Styles. Modify. Black. Caramond, click OK, OK, 
and then our third heading traditionally your final ones the ones that has more than 1.1.1 here typically they are italicized and they're obviously a lot smaller typically in your text so you can see here it's now dropped down to font 11 it's italicized black and then we want to add Garamond and then click OK click OK and there we go that's all our headings there done now you may notice here that your text is still Calibri and it doesn't quite conform to uh, the fonts that you've got here we're using Garamond there so what do you do with that so you want to highlight that and you can see here our normal one well we don't want that we want our normal one to change so if you click on that same as done before we go to manage styles and then modify so leave that as normal you want to change this to black we want to change this to Garamond 11 typically I always write in font uh, 11 font 11 works really well for Garamond but again you may be dictated to use Arial 12 whatever you are make sure that they're in there same with your spacing as well typically 1.5 line spacing is what the stations are in sometimes they're double spaced whatever you have dictated to you you can change them here this button is normal with no space this is 1.5 so if I look back here this is 1.5 um, it saves space and it's it's perfectly legible it's absolutely fine or you've got double space so I'm going to stick with the 1.5 then if I click format and font I want to make sure that that's all fine that looks great happy days with this I'm happy with the space in there's no need to change any of that so I click OK now if you want to set this up so it does have the indentation so if you are dictated um, about what uh, spacing you should have on the left if you click format and then paragraphs then you've got alignment from the left and here is where you can tell um, word, how far you want your words to come from the left. So let's just say we're going to have ours as one centimeter, for example. It's going to move in from the left. That's all fine. Spacing before, I tend to put, yeah, it's six. You can have zero. It's up to you. See what plays around. So if we can change it here, that moves that around there. So you can see a little preview there underneath. Zero, we're all happy at line point spacing. We click OK, we click OK, click OK again. Now, as you can see, that's all in there. We've got a nice indentation. We can type that through there. Every time we type now, finding we're in our normal category. So if I just type away, da -da -da -da, that's all absolutely fine. Click there. We want to have a new chapter. Chapter 2, title 2, type away. And then we've got a heading to, title, etc. So that's how you set up your your work into that profile. You go ahead and you'd save that, and then you'd then copy and paste some work into this. Make sure you highlight uh, your your titles. Make sure that they, so for example, your chapter title. Highlight that, then click that button. That'll change it to that. If you've got some text, highlight it and make sure you click normal. And then go through for each one of them and you're absolutely fine. So that's how you set up that. In our next tutorial, I'll talk about how to add um, your different texts into there. And I'll talk to you about uh, page numbers and how to add some um, uh, headers and footers and that kind of thing. So thank you.